Once again to the School of Prayer, today is Tuesday when we not only pray, we also learn how to make a habit of praying. And I'd like to say this again, Christians must learn how to pray. I see sometimes we have a lot, <laughs> sorry I'm laughing, we have all kinds of things going on these days. Some of them, I don't believe they are praying, I think we are just playing. The two words are very similar to each other. If you just change L to R, all right, <laughs> you switch the two, you see Praying becomes what? Playing. And it's very important we don't play. It's important we pray effectively. That's why we take time on Tuesdays to teach. Okay? It's very important we learn how to do it effectively. Say, be careful when you approach the temple of God. Draw near to do what? Listen. He said, otherwise you will be offering what? A sacrifice of fools. People will go to pray a lot of times without realizing it. They do not know. David Solomon said they are doing that which is evil. So that's why we gather to learn concerning how to pray. It's important you know the right prayer points, where to state, uh, put your heart, so that you don't say things that God would not even bother listening to, or things that are you not know, displeasing to Him. I see. I saw one man today to, uh, uh, preaching. Not today. Somebody shared the video. I don't know when. It's not in Nigeria. I don't know how long ago. But I was so disappointed that the preacher would say that it was election time. I said, well, "Look, we're not going to pray. We're not praying for the leader." I said. God doesn't choose leaders. He said, if he has been choosing, then he's done a very bad job. Yes, he said, so he's not been choosing because the leaders have been bad. And it's not in Nigeria, right? This was the day or so before their country was going to the polls. So he said, look, he's not leading them to pray for the leaders, so to choose God to choose leaders. God doesn't choose leaders. You guys are going to the polls. You choose anybody you like. Now let me not start because there are certain claims he made. I just said, God, this is not, this is not even based on scripture. He said, God, nobody chooses leaders for Israel. As this country is not Israel, God doesn't bother. You know, right there and there, I read that like four scriptures of where he chose for other nations, none of them Israel. Egypt, um, what do you call it? Babylon. In fact, he told, what do you call it? Um, Nebuchadnezzar directly, I am the one that put you here. And he told Elijah, uh, Elijah, you will anoint Hazael as king over Syria. That was not Israel. Anyway, so, see, when we are going to pray, that's why we have to learn. I hope you're getting my point. I will talk about that in the game because we're talking about claiming a land. I want to say something about it today. But before we start teaching as usual, let's take our declaration of understanding. And if you are blessed and you know God will speak to you today, you will say it from the bottom of your heart. Want to, let's go now, I declare. The Lord has given me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And I'm being filled with the knowledge of his will. In all spiritual wisdom and understanding. As a result of this, I'm walking in a manner worthy of the Lord. I am pleasing him in all respect. I'm bearing fruit in every good work. And I'm increasing in the knowledge of God. Now again, I incline my ears to his word. The Lord is entering my heart. It is giving me light and direction. He's healing me in every area, and he's making me more and more like the Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Please take your, amen? Amen. Ah, take your seats, please. Let's, um, we're going to teach, well, I have a small title, no, I don't have a title, <laughs> I just know the thing I want to talk about today, and it's about faith. Somebody say faith. faith. It's about faith. Say faith. faith. Yes. What is a prayer of faith? Please, understand the prayer of faith is not the prayer that you say only once. A prayer, every valid prayer is a prayer of faith. What did I say? Every valid prayer is a prayer of faith. That's not how I said it all. How did I say it? Every valid prayer is a prayer of faith. I said it with joy and gladness in my heart. With with with, no, with volume in my voice. Now let's go. To, let's go. Let's go by it again. One, two. Let's go. Everybody pray, pray of faith. Thank you. If it's not of faith, it's invalid. So let me say to you again: All prayers must be prayers of faith. If it's a prayer of intercession, it must be by faith. If it's a prayer of petition, it must be a prayer of faith. Praise is a form of prayer. Thanksgiving is a form of prayer. Prayer is defined simply as you 
addressing, like Solomon will say, like David will say, your verses to God. You are speaking to God himself. That's what prayer um, is. Sometimes you're just giving him thanks for what he has done. At other times you are making requests for him to do something in your life. The most important thing about prayer is that it is directed towards God. And you say, thy will be done. That's one important statement in prayer. Doesn't mean, when you say your will be done, doesn't mean you don't know the will. And you're just saying anything should be done and I'll be happy with it. No, many times thy will means that which I have discovered in scripture should be done in my life. That is what prayer means, all right? So every valid prayer must be a prayer of faith. Let me remind us again, what are the opposite of prayer of faith? One, a prayer of mere habit is a prayer of unbelief. It's not a prayer of faith. That is, it's time to pray. Like we made the, I read the joke many years ago. Somebody was praying, say, our father who art in heaven. And the father answered, what can I do for you? He said, please don't interrupt and pray. Did you catch the joke? Yes. Say, our father. And the father said, uh-huh, how can I help you? He said, please do not interrupt. I am trying to pray. That is, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just uttering words, all right, as a habit that I've been trained to, you know, to follow a habit. That's not, um, that's what I call a prayer of mere habit. When we pray, we actually expect somebody is listening. We actually expect that he's, he, he's, he loves to hear our voice and he will listen if we ask according to his will in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. That is what faith means. I hope you're getting my point. The opposite of prayer of faith, again, prayer of copy. Prayer, I've talked about this again and again. I don't want to go back all of it again. There's prayer of show. Jesus talked about it. They like to make prayers in the open so that the people will be, respect them. Say, so verily, verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. Okay? So, people come out just to make a show of prayer. They become very eloquent in public. They're just showing off. That's not a prayer of faith. Okay? So, there are all kinds of things. But if it's going to be valid, it must have faith undergirding it. Is that all right? So, what I want to do again today is to provoke faith in our hearts when we are praying. Let me say it again. One thing that Satan does is to undermine faith. Undermine faith. It throws unbelief. And one of the major things, like the other day, one pastor in Abuja was speaking. You know, this day, sorry, please. You know, I, I, I give these apologies a lot of time. And I really mean it when I'm apologizing like that. I don't mean to be critical. Just that, you know, these days people say all kinds of things and they throw them out. Like the one I just told you now, in which a man was preaching. And I mean, the video was sent to me. And in his country, it's not Nigeria. They are going to the polls. And the last thing they told them before going is that God doesn't care. How can they pray by faith? Is that possible? He said, God does not appoint leaders. And his reason for saying God doesn't appoint leaders, I find it very, very strange. I don't want to go into details about it. So basically, they are going to, he said, so they are not going to pray about the forthcoming election. That's how Satan, you know, disrupts our flow. He undermines our ability. He undermines the faith that is in our hearts. Or just undermines it. You know, cuts it off bit by bit until there's no more faith. In the same manner, I heard a preacher say the other day, like I was saying, I was apologizing. I don't mean to be critical. You, on Sunday, you broadcast, you have a government that has been sworn in, they've settled down, and you say, see, we still reject Muslim Muslim ticket. Now, if you want to re- reject Muslim Muslim ticket, it's your problem. I hope I get my point. But don't come to church to tell the people of God not to pray again. That we reject a sitting government. Verily, verily, I say unto you, brethren, that is iniquity. Please, I want to, because we're talking about claiming the land, I need to get these things clear. You know, that man that I said was speaking, he said something, which is what he said, if God was the one appointing leader, he said, in Africa, he has been doing a very bad job. Now, let me, let me, I need to help Christians understand. Was Saul a good leader? Saul, son of Kish, was he a good leader? Was he a good king? So the devil must have appointed him. God did a bad job. As, as some words not too heavy for our mouth. Was Jeroboam a good king? Who was was Saul or Jeroboam? Thank you. No, answer me. Who was was? Jeroboam was was. Saul didn't build idols. He didn't build place of worship for Baal. He only snuck at night to go and listen to a witch. Jeroboam built two at two extremes of Israel so that they would not go to 
uh, Jerusalem to worship. He was one of the worst kings in Israel. He laid a foundation that was difficult to destroy. Question, who appointed him? Answer me like you believe it all. Through who? The prophet Ahijah stopped him on the way. And the same prophet kept on speaking to him. When his wife went to go and ask with his son, do you understand, leave? Ahijah at that time was blind, could not see. So he said, ah, come in, because she was disguised. Before she came near, God had told the prophet, he, she's coming. As soon as she wanted to come and say, hello, I know you don't know me. He said, I know you. Wife of Jeroboam. And gave the word of the Lord. And God explained, I made you king. Look at what you have done. This is what I'm now going to do to you in return. Now, let's not talk about the consequence of their iniquity. What I want to talk about is that the fact that God appointed somebody is not, is not a guarantee he will be good. Many pastors are very bad people. God still called them to ministry. So, to tell me that God did a bad job, I find it very funny. You, you were not responsible as a group to hold them with prayer. They want to blame God for it. Brethren, preachers, of, please be very, very careful. Don't undermine the faith of the people. You want to hear the truth? God appoints leaders. Nobody else does. The quality of their character and their works at the end, all right, is irrelevant. It does not in any way say whether God appointed them or not. We know that God specifically by himself appointed Nebuchadnezzar. He said it. Sometimes he appoints leaders like the Assyrian kings. God appointed them. He said, I strengthen their hands against a nation that I'm angry with. In case you do not know, Assyria was one of the most wicked kingdoms of those days. God said, I picked the, he said, they are the weapon of what? My anger. He said, when I'm angry with the Egyptian, I carry him and deliver him to the hand of a cruel master. God appoints cruel masters. Why I'm saying this is that when people don't hear the truth, all right, they undermine faith. They undermine faith. All right? They preach what is wrong. So imagine that kind of pastor I'm telling Nabuja, saying that we still reject. I said a government that is sitting down. Now, which is what I want to teach today. Be careful lest God shut you down. You, the preacher, you, the church. If you don't do what he's saying, you will suffer the consequences. And that's one thing I want to teach you us today. God holds you responsible. He said, where is the person I told you to keep? He said, I was busy here and there. You know, God holds you responsible if things spoil, if you put them in your hands, and you didn't do what you were supposed to do. If you did what you were supposed to do and they still spoil, it's not your problem. He said, if, it's, if a wicked man is going on in his ways and I send you a prophet to go and tell him to stop, he said, if you don't tell him, he will die in his sins, and then I will turn to you, prophet, come and pay. He said, but if you go and tell him, repent, judgment is coming. And he doesn't repent. He said, then, you are free. I want to say boldly, <laughs> We live in a nation, all right? When God, oh God, we don't get it. When God will come to recompense, when God will ask questions, we'll be amazed at what he's holding us responsible for. He will say, you, you are from River State. You say, yes, sir. I'm not from River State. I'm just an example. Say, when local government people were born in there, they say, what did you do? You're like, I'm not in politics. Say, no. I didn't think you should be in politics. I thought you'd be in church. So that's where I was. What were you doing? We were criticizing and this is the problem with bad government. And God will play it back for you. Check it one hour. All of you, you sat down, did nothing else. They will now come and say, I have authority in Christ. Authority to do what? To command for shoe and shirt. Are you not even ashamed of yourself? They give you authority. What do you use it for is food. What shall we eat? What shall we drink with? What shall we clothe ourselves? It's where you want to do whether you'll be commanding rain, not to fall. So the weather should come to a standstill now because you want to marry. Don't you know to wait inside the rain is a blessing? When you want to do funeral, that is when you'll be praying that the rain will not fall. Meanwhile, they were, they were blowing up local government headquarters in your state. You didn't grab your brethren by the hand. Say, let us say, trust far and no further. Let us exercise our authority. All we know faith for is what we shall eat, what we shall drink. I command this stomach to be full. Kabaya, botoboya, I hate your food. Ah, sure. Shame, shame. You know what I mean by shame, shame? Shame on this, some people. Let me not mention your name. You know, trouble is going on in front of you. All you are doing is I reject this government. Muslim, Muslim government cannot stand in Nigeria. And you call yourself a pastor. 
If God puts you out of ministry tomorrow, now you say, why did he do it? Have you never read in your scriptures before that strangers will build your walls? Have you never heard that your mother's children will serve you? In the context now, it's so perfect. Uh-uh. I took, oh God, what? Sometimes make it like a joke. I said, now I know why God created hellfire. You will instruct people with the word of God. Tell them the truth. They will not listen. Okay, you reject the government. is sitting down. It will sit over you for four years. Because some of us are praying. And that's what I'm teaching today. And those four years, they will not bless you. You will have a percentage increase in your blood pressure. And you don't realize it. Why don't you say, see, you know. I don't want to start talking politics now. Especially because some people, no matter, talk from that to tomorrow. They will not hear. They will not hear. Ah, yeah, yeah, they will not hear. They will not hear. Do you know one day I was in church? Not now. This story I'm telling you is over 20 years ago. Not even in Enugu, before I came to Enugu. I was in a church, pastor was preaching. I was preaching, he was preaching. That's when the human beings could be stubborn. Ah, see, when the word of God is coming forth, I say, ah, ah, don't even have reverence. When I was in church, this was in Enugu, I'm telling you two stories now. Pastor was preaching, it was Women's Day. She said, women are tough. One woman beside me went into the air. Woo! You know the way American women behave. This is no good, but she was being like an American woman. Scattered the place. Woo, woo, woo. I remember she grabbed the Bible like this. I was waving it. You, woo, woo. Preach it, preacher. She said, women are stronger than men. They can take a man by his, what do you call this? Thing? His collar and lift him from the ground. She was up on her feet. Woo, woo, woo. She said, so, thank you. So, women are power women. She was, oh, she was sitting beside me. I was like, hey, well, I don't come to American church today. <laughs> After a while, the pastor and I said, all right, all right, all right, let me go. He said, but no matter what you are as a woman, as a woman, men and women are different. This woman was beside me said, no, we are the same. <laughs> right beside me. I look at her, what did you just say? He said, we are the same. No, we are the same. Ah, how can you be the same? When the man was saying the thing she liked, she was a stubborn human being, it's obvious. You know, there are some people that, eh? Oh, my God. Jezebel is their auntie. Their mentor. Okay, that, thank you. Jezebel is their mentor. She's one of those people, I think. So when the pastor was saying things that appeared as if he supported the mentorship of Jezebel, she was excited. When the man said, okay, cool down. I said, ah, we're the same. Inside church. I told my children, that's why I got created hellfire. fire. I can prove it to you, but we'll not go there now. When God says, and you say no, as God said, he said, yes, he said, he said you will not surely die. That's Satan. The hell, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Those who say, God said, but no. Back to the story I was in. I was sitting in church, and pastor began to teach about appointments, God's order. He now said in Israel, at the point in time, God appointed David as king. And established Judah as a ruling tribe. Did you get that? And no matter whether you like it or not, the king had to come from Judah. And he was talking about that. Somebody said, me, So, Pastor, what are you saying? He just said something. You know why? That time, power must shift. It was Nadeko period. Then most of the rulers of Nigeria came from northern Nigeria. And this was in South, South. And they said, We're not going green. Pastor now mistakenly said, God can appoint a tribe. They said, I was there. Pastor, what are you saying? I, I, I felt like saying the guy, he's preaching the word of God. Go and oppose the word. You see, the word breaks people. Though. Yes. And listen, the word does not always say what we like to hear. Like that woman, I said, we are the same. We are, you are not the same. Wives, be subject to your own husbands. It's whether you like it or not. It's scripture. Some people don't know. You see, we, God doesn't say that which you like. I've seen people, you know, the, the Bible must say what they like. One man sat me down. When I say authority is from God, he said, he now showed me the authority is supposed to do good. So if it's not doing good, it's not from God. I said, okay, excuse me. When Paul wrote it, the Romans were the perfect masters in the world, right? Apparently, Paul did not know. Let's be careful. Many, see, I'm telling you, today, many Christians, God doesn't listen to their prayers. Once they start praying for the country, they shut the door. 
And God said, that is why I can't bless them inside there. They can't prosper inside there. No matter how much they labor, there is a spiritual force in the air that is working against them because they are opposing me. You, know, you have to be careful. There are times we oppose God, we don't realize it. Which king when Israel was it? Was it um, yeah, was Judah? That Neko killed. Because he was trying to support his brother in Israel. He's a king in Judah. The king of his, uh, uh, the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, said, What's my business with you? I'm going on a journey that God sent me. That one didn't listen. Neko killed him. And God allowed him to kill him. Because he's about to go and execute my judgment. Why are you stop, stopping him? Please, let's be careful. Don't oppose God. You can't. Don't. I'm talking about the prayer of faith. Faith means you take the word of God. Believe what he has said. How can a man come and tell me that God doesn't appoint it? Which, if I was like, sir, do you read the scriptures? It says, democracy is your decision. I said, don't be silly, brethren. Let's not be silly. How can 200 million people make a decision? Is it possible? And of course, people don't have enough experience. If you know you have enough experience in life, you know. God tells you, see, ahead of time, this person that I'm going to appoint next, I've told you before that election is, an, is what? An illusion. It's an illusion. I know in scripture like that, that men toss coins, but the decision is from who? Is from the Lord. What does that say? Any way you like to use, all right? That which God has ordained will come to pass. That's why I said in the Nigeria, in the, in, we were talking about it the other time. I said there are three levels of election in Nigeria, of appointment in, when it comes to political office for big ones like president and governor and then their uh, uh, running mates. So one, there's primaries because in uh, Nigeria law of today, you must be sponsored by a party. Remember that? Yeah, so what the, your party picks you in what you call party what? Primaries, in which you contest with other people and then among the party members, they select who will be their flag bearer. Okay, then we now invented the word here. We call it what? Secondaries, which is a main election. I said, but there's what? Tertiary. When God finally allows you to sit. And we have seen governors in this country that sat for, is it 13 days or 11 days? Less than two weeks, they were out of power. They won primaries. They won secondaries. The secondary. And then the Lord tertiarized them out of the place. If you, less than two weeks after they sat down, there was a Supreme Court ruling that, sorry, you are not the governor. And it was the hand of God. One man was running for office. He spent a lot of money. Bought the party structure, everything. And that brother was watching. He said, that man will never win. His friend said, why? He said, the prophet said he can never be the governor. Ah. He called me later. He said, I was the one that said it. I said, when? You know, there are things you say you can't even remember saying it. He said, I heard you say it long ago that that man will never be God. Ah, like, when did I say it? You know, I became afraid. Of course, the main election, the man lost heavily. Not only did he lose, hmm? somebody dragged the matter to court. They are dragged to court. The court annulled his winning the primaries. And said, in effect, he did not even contest in that election. <laughs> Do you know who we call God? Now, please let me establish this for all. Because that man was saying that uh, if God appoints for this country, it means that uh, he has done a bad job. Maybe we should talk to him. I said, yeah, you should talk to him. What gives you the impression that because somebody is appointed, he will be good? Let me just tell you. The fact that you prayed and prayed before you married your husband doesn't guarantee anything. See, once you've married, that's the will of God. Let's leave it there. Then I say, hey, I might share mine in the center of the will of God. And they don't. They've already said, do you? And you say, you do. They, say, they, they, they ask you, do you? You say, I did. You have did. They are pronounced you man and wife. You now want to come be question. The question is too late. The exam is over. They don't publish results. You prayed and God spoke to you. That is it. You can't come and say, what? People, are, God has spoken to people. They mind the will of God. Then the man took a gun. Sorry, the woman. No, who, who took what now? The man took a gun and shot his wife and killed his wife. And it was God that said he should marry. 
And an angel appointed them and linked them. People think once something is the will of God, it must work. What would do that nonsense? Was Adam the will of God? Is it exist? Was it the will of God? Should I tell you what he did to your generations? And mine? Was Eve the will of God? It was not will in which let's choose one of two. It was will in which God took time out to make the woman. What was the bane of the man's existence? The woman that gave us to me. That was the person that took him out of ministry. He lost the garden because of the will of God. Let her wake up to reality. You want to kill yourself to know the will of God. Now you know. You think that life will now be sweet. That is stage one. That's not even the full foundation. That's the only German floor. See, <laughs> those of you know building. Foundation was before that time. Before you pray, is this person the will of God? Is this the will of God? <laughs> and the foundation must be in place. What you are doing now is German flooring. God spoke to you, concerning who you marry. That's in the, those of you who don't know what they call buildings. Let this architect teach you small. When you want to build a building, let me give you the simple one. All right? A simple one story. That is two story American counting. Zero, one. All right? Two floor building. Zero, one. Hey. So simple, two-story building like that. You first dig. The remnant of the house of Judah shall take root downwards. It's called digging. You will do what? Dig. And I was told, if you are building a high-rise building, the foundation must be at least one-eighth the height of the building. Right? See? <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a part-time architect. Go and ask Bishop. So if the building is going to be 16 floors, eh? It's going to be at least two floors deep. No, sorry. That's one eighth of the total. It's even more than that. If you calculate it. You will dig and dig and dig. So when you are doing big building, this be the way we do so. You go inside. You go inside. It's called foundation. Now, knowing the will of God is not the foundation. Now, when you finish the foundation, they you know level, you know, they pour sand inside all the holes there. Then level the top and pour weak concrete, not really very strong concrete. Abi? <laughs> they don't even reinforce it most times. Occasionally, you may use a warehouse. I know small work. <laughs> this guy's like, why do you learn these things? You don't know me. <laughs> now, that's what they call German floor. I don't know why they call it German floor. Is it Germans that invented it? They did. Okay. All right. So they don't, they don't level the floor, they're now smoothing it. When you come, Sometimes, depending on the kind of way they are building it, you may think that there's nothing there. Just one smooth concrete floor. If you came late, if I happened to when we were young, my father took us to the site where he was building. So, I saw the neighbor. There was one guy building next to us. And I saw our own. So, like, this man is just starting. We will not go far. <laughs> my father looked at my little face. He didn't know how to explain. He made a statement which I didn't understand. He said, that man is ahead of us. I'm like, how can he be ahead of us? Because the way their own foundation was done, all right, it was rather high before they now fill it with sand both in and out. So I saw that before they fill it. But that man had done German floor, and it was in the lower part of the street. So it looked much lower than our own. So my father said, his own is, I said, how can it? Because he said, he had done German floor. Why you know the will of God as German floor? I'll tell you what the foundation is. I'm not, you know, I didn't tell you about the foundation. Now, let me ask you a question. Will of God man, will of God woman. If you do a very nice building, a very good German floor, let's forget the foundation for a moment. Are you going to park inside that house? Architect, tell us. Does it have walls yet? Does it have doors? Door to where? There's no walls there. Let me tell you about windows. It doesn't need window. You need window when you have walls. But the one you can be sure it doesn't have, it doesn't have a roof. You, you are still homeless. Even that place is your own. So if you know the will of God when you want to marry, you are homeless. And you are correct, too. You saw in a vision. A vision of the night. You saw, ah, still small voice, guy, loud. The voice of the Lord is like many water. You heard that is your wife. <laughs> so that you couldn't doubt it. Call to you like Samuel four times. Banky, arise, take her. It's my will. Now I'm telling you as a servant of God. 
the house that has no roof, has no walls, has, let's not talk about door and window. Door and window is when you have wall. It's open to the elements. Satan can come, demons can come. Angels can come, sure, but we, 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 that's not a problem. But anybody can come. Intruders can come. There's no fence. There's nothing. You only have German floor. I say to you today, you don't have a house. Thank you. Hi, this guy, you are preaching with me. Let me stay here. <laughs> you don't have a house. The Bible said every house is built by someone. You have to start building. You know the will of God? That's the German floor. Taking all the precepts of the kingdom to build that house. You hear that a wise woman builds her house. Do you get what I'm saying? You start building. Before that, you don't have a household. You now hear, husbands, love thy wife. That's what you are building. Do you get my point? So, I, I know the will of God. You have to now take that will of God to prayer. And start praying. You start building that house. You start learning how to talk. How to work with each other. How to forgive each other. How to work in agreement. How to make petitions. How not to be an accuser. The Bible says, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, Rebekah's sake. How to entreat the Lord for your wife's sake. How to pray for your husband. God brings children. How to nurture them in the, in, in the fear of the Lord. That is when you are building the house. Now, question, what's the foundation? You know, I joined the foundation part. Foundation is a life built on divine precepts, generally. That is why, see, knowing to hear God's voice is the simplest part of it. That's why, you know, you know me now. I, I don't remember, the thing is the sign of Pentecost, I said, that day I was going, and the Lord began to speak to me. I said, be quiet. Those who didn't speak to, they got to where they were going. You know, I mean, you know <laughs> some people now, they, hey, young, you know, I talk, preach to young people these days, because some of them have really gone, they have been led astray. Young people, stop harassing people, what God said to you. Just do what is right. Just do what is right. What is right from the scriptures, that's what I mean, from the Bible. Just do it all the time. Stop harassing that, you know, that morning I now prayed, that God now said, Spirit, trying to harass us with spirituality. You are not spiritual. God had to say because you don't know anything. Those that know, he didn't talk to them. He knew what they, they would do what is right. When I woke up that morning, the Lord now said, my son, your mouth smells. Go and brush your teeth. How would you feel like that? Why don't you come and give us that silly testimony? I woke up in the morning, the Lord now said to me, your mouth is smelling, you should brush when you wake up in the morning. And I went to brush, and I went and brushed, and then I said, use a toothpaste. And I realized that, oh, I was actually brushing with ordinary water. So I went, I stretched my hand. You know, you'll be wondering the, your head correct. You say, where did the pastor get this guest minister from? And when I finished brushing, I raised my mouth earlier, and I smell. <sighs> I said, I felt the freshness of the breath. I said, praise God. Thank you, Lord. It's good to know how to hear the voice of God. To brush your teeth. To brush your teeth. To brush your teeth. If I give that kind of testimony, would you wonder whether my head was correct? The pastor come. Where, where, where did he raise you up? I'm just wondering, which family do you come from? Your mother didn't tell you that. Holy Spirit had to tell you. Your mother didn't tell you. Even if your mother didn't tell you, didn't you go to school? Your mates didn't harass your life. Now that you'll be reasoning. But when it comes to some things in life, you know, like I told you, the, the one I saw, the one said, go to, go to hear the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. My husband was coming home. Holy Spirit said, no, don't shout at him. Just ask him how his day was. I said, you see, it's bad manners that you are displaying. You are blaming Holy Spirit. Can you shout at your boss? If you're working in an office, do you need the Holy Spirit? Your boss has accused you falsely. You couldn't raise your voice. So I'm tired of people coming late in this office. You, you came today. You were late. Say no, sir. I, I said, shut up. You were late. Yes, sir. I was late. <laughs> you just be silent. And when you want to go and meet him later, you knock. Hey, secretary. It's a guy in the office. Please, can I see him? Then she wait. You can say, yeah. So someone surprised wants to see you. Say, good afternoon, sir. Please, sir. I really am sorry. I just want to set the record straight, sir. What is the problem? Sir, you know, um, cut off time for lateness. Actually, 8 o'clock. You can ask witnesses, sir. I was here, 7.40. I'm, in fact, check the register. That's when I signed. See the way you talk to your boss. Where is your husband? Don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to me. 
talking. The Holy Spirit has to tell you, pipe down. It's so you have bad manners. Don't come and testify about your bad manners. I had wonder woman was talking. I said, look at you. Hi. Hey. You know, sometimes people do things. Eh? I start feeling sorry for myself. Because I know I must have done something like this one time. So I'm not saying, is that how people are looking at me like an idiot? Yes. I'm not blaming her. I'm just, all of us are like that. You. You do like that. You. You. All of you on that road. Me. All of us. So I'm not saying, not anybody. I'm not trying to emphasize something. So don't come here and be harassing us. The Holy Spirit now spoke to me. When Holy Spirit tells you some things, we're embarrassed for you. Like, you mean you didn't know that? So the man forgot his money in my hand. Holy Spirit said, give it back to him. Eh? <laughs> Holy Spirit had to say that. What were you planning to talk, do before? I felt that God just... You felt? You really are walking in the flesh? <laughs> Oh, I know where I went into all of this one. I jumped to tell you something. So, hey, that is the will of God, not the will of God. Leave that thing. The will of God in marriage doesn't work until you get up and apply the word of God to it. That's why I say you only have German flow. You only have the German flow. You have to know how to pray. You, know how, you have to know how to pray. You have to know how to pray for each other. You have to know how to build the principle. You know, you have to know how to spend money. You know, money can cause quarrel between husband and wife. You have to go and learn. So, man, you are the head of the house. So you are not supposed to handle money. Because every new phone, you bought it on credit. Please, if your husband is changing his phone every year, report him to me. Don't even worry. Just come and report him to me. I will command him to use that phone for the next four years. What is wrong with you? Those who made it, the battery can last four years. You, you, are too, you know you are a child. You can't redo your desire. Men, I know you are the head of the house. Head of the house doesn't mean you must handle the money. If you know you are not good with money, bro, don't ruin that house. And women, believe your husband is like that. Just come and report him to me. There's no problem. Don't fight, oh. Don't fight, oh, because you can't be right if you're not supposed to be the boss. Do you get my point? Yes, sir. So you do, what you do is go and, go and call this friend. Go, in fact, I'm, I'm giving you the... Come and talk to me. Husband, they are, going to re- they are coming to report you to me. And I will tell you the truth. I served in Nigeria Army. That's e- NYSC. That's what I learned something we used to do. There are some soldiers we had there. They are just bad people. Bad to their family. So the wife will go and report to the, the commanding officer. So the commanding officer will sit on the matter. As they are paying the man's salary... Yeah. The commanding officer will give the man an allowance from his own salary and give the rest to his wife. Because these children, they are not going to school. They are not eating well. Because, oh boy, they drink. They gamble. So there were people that they are looking at their wife for there's nothing they can do. And if you touch her, you are going to the guard. <laughs> not military. Military. Oh, God. Everybody should work in the military for like two years. Especially some of you that have sports children. You know how to obey instructions. And our guy is passing the money. Whatever you are, you know you stiffen. Monster. When he's passing at night, you stiffen. Monster. He's monster any time of the day. <laughs> so if you don't treat your wife well, they will handle you. Don't worry. The woman will just go and report to your guy. Sir, my children don't eat again. Why? I don't know. They sent the two of them back from school the other day. Why? We've not paid. Ah, with this salary that's coming, they call. What happened? I'm not kidding. I was there. They will make the man. They, what they just do for him? Just prioritize his responsibilities. So whatever is remaining, go and gamble it away, and go and smoke it away, go and drink it away. Your body, woman, and her children must be taken care of. Now, what am I going to say? How did I get there? I know what I was trying to say. German floor. Remember German floor? This guy was preaching with me. Let's continue. No, it's not the foundation. It's the German floor. Yeah, I've told you. A life built on the word of God. All right? For example, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. That's foundation. 
Do you get my point? That you can only marry a Christian committed to God's word. That is foundation. Well, emphasis now that now you have the German flow of knowing God's will. You still don't have a roof over your head. You only have a German flow. You now start building the home. I'm not giving ideas on how to build the home. You learn to manage more. You learn to work in agreement. Part of the things you have to learn is how to handle your in-laws. Actually, you don't need to handle your in-laws. You need to handle your parents. Your people, they are the problem. I, you know, I don't be, read my book, Fundamentals of Christian Marriage. I don't believe in in-law trouble. In-laws don't give trouble. Do they? They, can't, they? they don't have the ability to give trouble. Because in-law that wants to give my wife trouble, that is like, you are my relative, you want to pass and give my wife trouble. You have to pass first. I don't know whether I get my point. You have to pass through me. So if you can't pass through me, how do you do it? And so if you pass through me and give her trouble, then I give her the trouble, not you. And every time something happens, you call your, carry your phone, call your mother. Why did you marry? They are picking. And you know, he said he will slap me. He should slap you. Because you, you need it. He said, well, who should I call? Call his friend. Call me. You don't know me. Don't go and take my number from Felix and say, I want to call Pastor. <laughs> That's not what I mean. <laughs> That's not what I mean. You are listening to me now all the way from Jigawa. You want to call me. How am I supposed to come to Dutsi to solve your problems? That's not what I mean. No. <laughs> but you get my point. You go to a church. Call the, I mean, have, this is how you put you talk. If you see, his mother will all, your mother will always support you. No matter what you do. Unless you are really an You know some boys, they grow up smoking in their hand. So their mother knows them. But they are not many. Even some of those ones, they still support. Look, it's in the beginning she'll be supporting you. The point I'm trying to make, eh, all right, is that, see, you start learning precepts on how to build. You start learning how to build. Don't just run away with the will of God. Ah, God revealed that this is my husband. Eh? Did God not reveal that this is a promised land? Did he enter? I hope you're getting my point. God can reveal things. It doesn't make them work automatically. It just helps you get a beginning point. I didn't want to call it foundation because you should have laid a foundation before then. But now start building on top of it. Let me stop that there. I, don't, I know why I got there. I don't know why I stayed there. In the same manner. Let's back to, get back to the thing I was saying. We have a country. You do not judge this land, is it good or bad, by how you feel. Once it is yours, you fight. What did I say? Once it is yours, you fight. That's it. That man said, ah, God has not, if, if God is one appointing leaders, he has not done a good job in Africa at all. Now, he wasn't trying to indict God. He was using it as proof that God could not have been the one appointing because he has not been good. But unfortunately, he made one mistake. The leader is not as important as the people. He's not. I can prove to you from scriptures. Should I give you one simple one that you all know? Was Moses a good leader, a bad leader? No, answer me now. The way you are whispering, you are not sure. It was very good. They didn't enter the promised land. So leaders can't take into the promised land. Forget that. If you don't want to enter, you will not enter. If you don't want to enter, you, do, you will not enter. They can't force into the promised land. So I thought about it today. After I watched that video, really. Not really today, I thought it was yesterday. It made me think again. I said, eh, this pastor, are you aware? That the, an average African man is worse than those Israelites were. Do you, you hear what I say? Yes, it's worse. Why? It's an African. That's the way they are. If Moses could not take those ones to the promised land, Moses and Samuel in cooperation cannot take these ones to the promised land. Let them recruit Joseph and Daniel. They ain't going anywhere. I told somebody, okay, I preached it that time. 
I said, you, I don't know about now. Things are different now. But those that I used to say that, look, Jesus cannot solve some problems for Nigeria. Even if you like, appoint him as head of state. He said, what do you mean? That's a, he went to his hometown. Could he solve problems there? People don't know that. When you say, I can you say, Jesus is Jesus. He died on the cross. How many are saved? No, think about it. You know, we don't think about these things well. Jesus, the Lord Jesus, our Lord, your Lord and mine, our Savior, is what I'm talking about. If you make him head of state in Nigeria of today, democratic head of state, oh, I don't mean the coming king. Ah, let me tell you something about the coming king. The coming king, go and read Psalm 2. Before it can rain, eh? He has a rod of iron in his hands with which he smashes people like pottery. That's not allowed in democracy. Say, my enemies who said I shouldn't rule over them, bring them before me and slay them in front of me. That's how kings rule. I'm talking about president. That's why God doesn't have any president. And like in his order of this thing, just our current day. So if you give Jesus and made him be president, let me tell you the problems you will have. Number one, Senate. Can you imagine Jesus gives a law? The Senate has to approve. He has to write a bill. They, they will move for impeachment when they write righteous laws. House of Representatives. He can't alter the constitution except two thirds of, you know, state assemblies across the country agree. That's why you will know the meaning of it. Could they do no mighty work? Because of what? Their unbelief. The house of Senate is a house of unbelief. The house of representatives is a house of unbelief. The state houses of assemblies, they are houses of unbelief. That is why when Jesus is coming back, one of the major things he must do is to destroy his enemies. People now say he's wicked. That's what, see, get ready. He kills. Because if he doesn't kill, there will be no peace. Some people can compare in Nigeria and say, hey, if you go to Rwanda, one of my classmates did that thing. He said, that's why good, good leaders are evident. I said, which country? Rwanda. I said, which Rwanda? I said, in that case, let's go back, give a passenger 30 years in power. He asked for thought, and did we agree? I said, how can you compare Nigeria where we kick out presidents even in four years? <laughs> Every four years, he has to beg for votes to a man who has sat in power for 30 years. God bless Paul Kagame. I'm not criticizing him. I'm just saying democracy is a problem. Inherently. And if Jesus was the president over these people that you see around you, things won't be much different. Not because of his lack of capacity, but because of their what? Unbelief. And I have scripture for it. He went to his hometown and could there do no mighty work, but and that was because of their unbelief. They were looking at him like, what is he up to? And that's what I want to preach again to us today. About faith. So when a preacher tells me that God doesn't care who's your leader, he's igniting unbelief. Let me tell you the truth. Why did God choose Saul for Israel, even though he was not, he didn't know he was not good? Answer me, did he know? You know why he chose Saul? That was the best he could offer them. Any other person he picked would have been worse than Saul. People undermine faith when they say things like that. And they don't realize that undermined faith is why things will become the way they don't want it to be. You tell me that, ah, he's been choosing bad. I said, see, a good man, a good leader, we know Moses was a good leader. Yet, he could not take just two million people into the promised land. Even though he was working miracles. Now, wait, 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 wait. I hope you know Bola Tinubu can't work miracles. I hope you know Buhari could not work miracles. I hope you know Good Lord Jonathan could not work miracles. Moses was working miracles. Moses will get up. You say there's no water. We'll take World Bank loan. 
still two-thirds of it, if not three-quarters. Then the remaining one quarter, we share it amongst the states to go and start digging pipeline. Ten years later, we still don't have water. Moses will take a rod and strike a rock and say, well, man, keep your money. Lend it another 4,000 years to some people and water will come out of the rock. They will say, there is no food. Moses will fill everywhere with chicken. They will say, there are bandits in that place. Moses will climb a mountain, raise his two hands and Joshua will kill all the bandits. Are you getting where I'm going? Moses, see, when you rose up against Moses, he does like this. The ground opened and you fell inside. <laughs> this guy was walking miracles, man. <laughs> the guy was walking miracles. If you don't know what to do, he will go into a tent of meeting and you will feel God approach, cover the place with smoke, with a cloud. And he will tell Moses what to do. God was giving him laws. Great leader, walking miracles, hearing from God, and they did not enter the promised land. You now give me a president that can't walk miracles, that doesn't hear the voice of God, and you are saying that he's not a good leader because he can't enter the promised land. And you want to enter in eight years, four years, not in man's tenure, what Moses could not do in 40. You said, check him, you're a wicked soul. To expect that of one human being, I think you're wicked. Think about it. To expect that of one... Ah, you've seen... Now, do you still think... Moses, Moses, will, if you, Moses will not run for president in Nigeria. Why? Let me be honest with you. Eh? As a true Christian, why not for the sense of calling? Hmm? I live in this country, and I know it's, it's as bad in mo- almost every other country in the world. All right? I live in this country, and I can assure you of one thing. We're not for a sense of calling. No Christian will want to enter into public office. If you don't have a sense of calling, there's nothing you're doing there. The people will frustrate you. If you don't have a sense of, look, this is my next call in life. This is what I'm supposed to do. What are you doing there? Let me tell you what happened to one of my friends. He is a Christian. He's a classmate. When they were talking about things that happen in this country, listen to this carefully. He works for an international body. They go around doing good. Donating money and all of that. So they had some money. And they went to a state in Nigeria. I won't tell you the name of the state. They are complaining that their soil is polluted. They don't have good drinking water. This guy has brought money. International agency. This guy is from that state in this country. And they wanted to provide water in the villages. But they couldn't just walk in. So they asked for the legislators representing those areas in the state assembly to take them there. All right, your people say don't have, we have money. We have been authorized by an international agency to provide this amenity for you guys. Those guys said they should come and give them their own court first. Ah, the guy tried to explain, you don't understand. I'm dealing with Americans and Europeans. I will go to jail if I give you a dime. I live in their country. I'm sorry. Can't give you anything. The guy said, no, if he's not giving them money, they are not taking them, his team, anywhere. Do you know the guy finally had to remove his money from that state entirely? Um, yes, I don't have to tell you south south. But land polluted and all of that. And took it finally found somewhere in the southwest where nobody asked him for anything. That was where he spent the money. I will say this one, I know with it. One of our big banks in Nigeria, you know what they call CSR? CSR. Corporate Social Response. You just want to do something. To show that they are responsible. So they sent bicycles, branded it. They want to distribute in villages to young boys and young girls going to school to help them move around. That just is branded quite all right. <laughs> they now went to one Igwe. The man said, No, 
that they first they are supposed to greet him with a cow first. And that they will not tell the number of the bicycles that is zone to share. What they just wanted to look, tell us this is the school you should go to. It's free. By the time they finish giving them the conditions, they are empty all that the bicycles return to Lagos. The MD is okay, there's no problem. Tell him I'm not giving his community anymore. I don't know how they finally shared it. You might just say, that was... Now, this is I'm telling you, I know people inside each of these I'm telling you. So I'm not concocting stories. And you want one... See, the problem is the people. I hope you follow what I'm saying. Yes, Moses with all his miracle walking... Pa- you know, if it's Moses, he will blink. He will not be good by tomorrow. A normal person just carried, he carried his load and left. It's as, it's, as, it's as if you guys don't get our point. We are dashing your children, your children, free of charge, good quality. Yes, we have some small gain. What is our gain? No, no. Which kind of nonsense customer? You want customer in that village you go go? Look at this guy. Doesn't know what I'm talking about, a big bank. This guy, in fact, this particular bank, they operate like a, like a, like a, like what do you call this? Like a, you have a consumer bank. What's the other one? Merchant bank. They operate like a merchant bank. They don't need anything. What they just gain is popularity. People, you understand? Goodwill. That's all. That's why I say it's branded. I mean, you've gone, you've seen it before. You go for programs. They give you, people have given me phone chargers and stuff like that, but the company will brand, you know, all the power banks. You've seen it. They, they'll put their name on it. That's all they gain. These are bicycles, which if your children don't like their look, they can scratch it off. They are not there. Yet the man said, no, they are supposed to first greet him with a cow. I won't tell you the community. And then they will not give him his own bicycles. Igwe, where are you riding to? <laughs> All he was supposed to do, just point. Okay. Yeah. These people are good people. These people are good people. They, just, they also got to just come there. Just make small noise, take photographs, and give one child at a time. I enter their vehicles and go away. Those of you still don't think that the people are the problem. You don't know what they're dealing with. That man said, God has been doing a bad job. God said, me? I have given you fact in Nigeria. I have given you the best you could ever handle each time. I have. You deserve worse. Somebody said, I've done a bad job. What an insult. He says, it's proof that I'm not in charge. That's what they said about God. That he doesn't choose leaders. Why the ones he has chosen. Over the years, they've not been good. I've proven to you now, there was nothing wrong with them. That was not the problem. I've proven to you now, because what is he saying? He sits down far away. You don't like the way things are going on around. What about your neighbor? You don't hold him responsible. What about you? You talking. Have you done your portion? Please, today my job is to stir faith in your heart. And I'm sorry, I have to oppose my brethren. Prophets oppose each other. Yes, they do. Because if you are saying the truth, you must oppose those who are not saying the same thing. When Jeremiah spoke, did Ananiah not, not arise and oppose him? And Jeremiah said, no problem. Have it your way. But God will prove who he actually spoke through. When all those prophets were there in front of um, Ahab prophesying, was Micaiah not slapped in the face, in the mouth, because he prophesied something? And that older prophet, I assume, Slapped him in the mouth. And when did the Holy Spirit leave me and then go and start using you to prophesy? It happens. Prophetic conflicts all over the scriptures. Jeremiah said, 70 years you'll be there in captivity. Is there another that came and said, it's two years, God will break the bond of the Babylonians. And Jeremiah said, may God do as you have spoken. As Jeremiah left, said, go and tell him, because he has re- instigated rebellion against this, the Lord. This year he will die. 
Was this Ezekiel or Jeremiah that prophesied and Peletia fell down and died? See, that's why I have to oppose my brethren because they are undermining faith. General rule that is, applies everywhere, but let me speak specifically to those who are in my country here in Nigeria. Number one, God created this country. Any pastor or prophet that says otherwise lies. Number two, God appoints presidents. Democracy doesn't. Democracy is a mirage. It's an illusion that gives us the impression we are in control. We are not. Go out, vote is a civic duty. In fact, each time you vote, you are speaking. And it's all those words that God put together. Now, you may not realize how he does it, but he does it. For example, if you vote knowing that this person is not capable, but he's my friend, he's my brother. I hope you're getting my point. He's from my place. God says, your prayer is no longer effective. I've subtracted your prayer for the country or the community. I've subtracted your prayer from the crucible of the saints. Why? You are walking in unbelief. The way I illustrate that was when I was in school. I had a roommate who was a law student. Came to the room one day and was complaining about one guy. Let's, let's just call the guy's name Adam, not Adam. He said, Adam is a very useless man. Can you imagine that one is going to be law student association president? Is a law student. It was law student. They were doing their law sir, election. And this Mr. Adam ran for president. And he won. He said, can you believe that that guy too said he'll be president? What nonsense. Such a visionless, classless. You know, he abused, he used words for that guy. And I, I was feeling sorry for the association. I said, wow. Look at the person. They ended with, anyway, I voted for him. I like the way you turned your head. It's like when the dog sees something, not sure. You know the way dog will turn like this? Yeah, you should turn like that. Like, what? I didn't remember the guy's name. I shouted, what did you just say? He said, no, no, you see, it's my brother. Like, you guys are related. No, they were from the same village. What? You just described to me now how the association would never make progress under this individual. Then you contributed your vote to make him the president. If you are a Christian, you won't go to hellfire. No, you won't. <laughs> However, your prayers have been cancelled. Listen to this. In more places than you realize it. You are called a double-minded man, unstable in how many? All his ways. Such a person should not expect that he will receive anything from the hand of God. Because you mock me. You come to my presence all the time to supposedly cry. That I should do something for, let's say, your association now. And it could be your nation. And it's time then I give you a place to make a statement about who you want me to put in place. And you say, sir, as long as it's my relative, put an idiot there. Can you see? That's why I tell you, when you vote. Do you know once I went on radio? Election time. I just said, let your vote represent, because this was like, it was Sunday. Election was going to be next Saturday. So I was on radio on Sunday. We were talking, so I was, of course, you know the way it goes. They ask questions. How should I? But they expected that I would mobilize. This was Jonathan versus Buhari election in which Buhari won. And I made a number of statements. I said everything you do must represent what you expect. Now listen to me. Let me just quickly say this. You don't know the heart of man, so you can't die for any man. It's in the Bible. The heart of man eh, is deceitful. You don't even know it. He said, who can know it? Peter had to pray. After they are selected and I got, what they you call Joseph and Matthias, those two people, said, God, don't let you know the heart of man. Peter had to pray, lead the church in prayer. So no matter how good somebody looks to you, it's your impression. You don't know the person's heart. 
It's only God that knows the person's heart and knows what the person can do and whether the person will do his will. There are many leaders appointed even by God and God says, he won't do my will. But see the best I have. That's why you need to pray. I said that I just said to, to people, I said, please, when you want to vote, it's just a statement you are making. I said, please, if you feel, as an example then, like one of our brothers said, he said he wouldn't reward. He didn't go to vote. He didn't like Buhari. This is past now, so I can talk about it. He did not like Buhari. Now, former President Buhari, when he was running, he said he didn't like him. He said, but he was very angry with good Lord Jonathan's government. He said, I cannot reward him with my vote. He and I disagreed on some things, but that was his principle. I said, I, 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 I termize a number of things. There are people I wouldn't vote for because I feel that they are not enlightened. That he doesn't know enough to run, do you get, run the government. Other people I say, this one is a criminal. Do you to follow my point? But it's my opinion. It is not deciding. Do you know, the person you call a criminal sometimes, God may know what he wants to use him to do. I told you that some particular former head of state in this country, military time, I won't tell you which one of them. Many people don't like the man till today. But the day somebody sat down and showed me what God used this man to do. And I personally witnessed some other things he did openly, but I can't discuss the significance now. Do you know, I would never have voted that man into power, me, talking. But God took him and put him in power. And when he had finished doing everything he wanted to do, God removed him. So instead of you vote like that, it's a statement you're making. And I said it on radio. So I said, on Saturday, please, let's all go and vote. I went to vote. I have my voter's card, but this is ready. I couldn't show it. I told everybody, I have my voter's card. Please, get your voter's card. Get ready. Let's go and vote on Saturday. And vote according to your conviction. Do you know somebody called in? There is people like me that cause problems in this country. He didn't say it like that. He said, he said things like, the statement like this one you have made is the reason why we are still in bondage. He said that. So I wonder, what did I just say? See, I've not, what I told him is what I said. I said, let your vote reflect your conviction. I said, if you are voting like corruption, you feel that this man will be better on corruption than this one, vote for that one. If you feel that no, like one man said, corruption is not the problem of this country. It's a freedom to move about. Okay, who, who of these two is more likely to guarantee you that freedom to move about in your conviction? Vote. I said, I didn't know, put all these things together and make a statement to God with your vote. A man calls him, I'm causing problems. What did he mean? I was supposed to mobilize Christians to support good Lord Jonathan. I felt like I said, thunder fire you there. <laughs> and listen, whether I say it or not, that thunder is coming for you. Like one of my classmates said, stay in one place so that he'll know where to strike you. Because a prophet is speaking, you, you don't reply. You should just shut up. That's what the guy said. That's why I don't endorse anybody when I'm preaching. No. Even if you're my bosom friend, I won't. Because God has made his choice. God has made his choice. He has put many things together. I told you this last election was a sham in Christianity. It was, a, it was mockery. We just irritated heaven, mocked ourselves, and proved to the so-called enemies we can't do anything. I will say this until enough people that fear God will believe me. For those who don't know, you know, there are many things. <laughs> he said, this you will have of the, of the hand of the Lord, you will lie down in torment. See, let me tell you something, eh? If God has not given you something, if you want to force yourself to collect it, sometimes you enter into bondage. After Christians finish all their mobilization, you know what, what they just finally made as a statement? There is nothing you can do. That's the statement you have made. Because you had prophets prophesy. You had churches mobilized. Pastors, priests were teaching people how to vote. At the end of the day, what happened? Nothing. When Erufai was governor of Kaduna, second tenure, he chose a Muslim as his running mate, a woman. And they asked him, 
He said he, he felt that if anything were to happen, that there's the most competent person to take over from him. What about the Christian vote? He said, I know they won't vote for me anyway. Do I agree with him? No. But you see, they are, you stop playing your card in such a way that you just cheap. That, you know, the next person is bolder. Trying to balance it. <laughs> I said, Christian, see, you have just proven now that there's nothing you can't mobilize and control elections. Now, it's not as if I felt you could. I always knew it. You know me. I've always said that this won't work. When Good Lord Jonathan won, God had his reason for doing what he did that first time. One man went to preach. He said, look, Christians, you see, that have been, he came to educate the church. That if he mentioned big churches, Catholic church, Anglican church, Pentecostals, he mentioned redeem, mentioned winners, mentioned deeper life. If we all, can all come together, God said, okay, you believe that, I will watch you come together. You came together, what happened? Nothing. The power belongs to God. It doesn't belong to the association of Christians in Nigeria. It doesn't. Of course, they didn't listen. They said, I was angry with me today, but you know what? I don't care. I've never thought I should be popular. No, I don't. I've never felt I should be. But I'm, I will be judged by God if I don't tell his people the truth. I don't know. You know what it is? Their political power was set back. If it was, it wasn't there anyway. They never had it. But they have just proven that they don't matter. You know why they don't matter? Because they try to matter where they don't matter. If they had known how to pray, if they had known how to move the hand of God, let me say it again until you have enough sensible people who will believe it. Next time politicians gathered say they want to run for power. Candidates are no more than 18. Are you 20? Eh? Okay, the serious ones will know they are just like two or three. <laughs> Do you get my point? Eh? But let's not appear to be under many, you know, looking at anybody. Go to the 18 of them. Prepare a fat book on righteous governance. Researched by serious people, put together by serious headed human beings on how to m- govern a multicultural, multi religion, multi ethnic society according to scriptures. Words of counsel, make them in bond and send delegates to each one of them. And say, if God were to give you power, this is what he expects from you. Do you know God has books like that? Yeah, he does. He will sit down and tell him what to do with law enforcement, what to do with lawmaking, what to do with this, what to do with taxes, everything. And show him from scriptures and from examples. Was that not what the elders tried to do with Jeroboam? With Rehoboam. They went to Rehoboam. This is what you should do. Go to all of them. Send delegates. Come and greet them. Bring your press men with you so that they will know you came. And you're not discriminating against anybody. Take pictures. Once they have seen you deliver the person, let the press man go out. Then pray for the individual. And say to him, the power belongs to God. If he gives you the power, and warn him prophetically, if he gives you the power, this is how to use it against him and incur his wrath. And don't be ashamed of it. Let him know you are the people of God. Because in every nation, God has his people. And go through 18 of them. And pray sincerely for each one the same way. And go home. Then go and vote according to your consciences. You know what? You will have power all the time, whoever mounts the throne. Not for one person to be standing in the seat of government Abuja, and say that we we'll reject this government. I say, if DSS shuts your door now, you say we should pray. I said the other time, I got messages. Pray, pray, pray. This man has been arrested in my mind. Why shouldn't he be arrested? Yeah, because I was one of those, because I know people in the inner circles. I should pray, I should pray, I should pray. No, I felt like, see, they, they delayed. If I were them, I would have picked you up three days earlier. They are using your authority. And, you, and then you are, this two days to election, or a day before election. And not even that, hey, hey, I should pray. I should pray? I hope they will let you go quickly. But I'm, I hope you have learned your lesson. That you don't use prophetic office for things like this. Talking about faith. Remember, that's, I began to talk about that. What am I doing? Staying off faith. In the hearts of the people. God holds you responsible. If the government you did not vote for fails. 
You can't remove your hands. As soon as the government is in power, you start your intercessory work again. It doesn't, look, vote, people will be surprised. Most presidents, have, I think it's only one person time I voted in the last five circles and my vote was correct. Only once. One, two, three, four. I'm counting, please. Five. Maybe the last six circles. If they didn't want to miss voting, the person I wanted to vote still did not win. From 99. From 99. We are amongst those who wanted to vote for. I can't remember whether I voted or not for Olufale or Basanjo one. But do you know what? If I didn't tell you, you will never suspect. Because whoever enters, I'm the full intercessory gear. I never felt I controlled who won elections. Pastors, stop removing faith from the hearts of the people. If you do, they cannot pray effectively for the land that God has given them the responsibility to keep. I was saying to you, you know the will of God doesn't mean anything. You now have to enforce another set of will of God. Do you get my point? Rebecca was chosen for Isaac clearly by the will of God. Oh, you have been merciful to my master Abraham. Please let it be that the young woman who will come and say, let me fetch water for you and then for your camels while you relax and this and that and that and that. Let her be the one that you have chosen. This guy knew that God had a choice. Did everything go well in that house? Oh, no. There was rivalry. In the 20th year, he said, Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife Rebecca's sake. And then she conceived. That look, you know the will of God doesn't mean anything automatic. Where are you in entreaties? People think things are not working well because I didn't pray well before I did. No. God said, everything. You laid your gemma floor. Time to start building with entreaties, prayers, Petitions, intercessions, thanksgivings, made on behalf of all men, for kings and those who are in authority. So you may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. Before God who desires that all men will be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Things are not working well. Don't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that you have, I mean concerning the will of God. It just means you have work to do. It just means you have work to do. He said to Adam, guard it and do what? Keep it. Guard it. Protect it. I planted a garden for you. But I've given you the instruction to do what? Guard it and keep it. Build the fence the way you want it. Speak words. Tell the animals where they can go, where they won't go. If that garden is in a mess, it's your responsibility, not mine. All the power belongs to me, yes, but you have to know how to invoke the power. Satan keeps us busy. You are, from, you are from River State. They are burning your local government offices. And you are saying, Wicked is a wicked man. His name is very close to what you called him anyway. <laughs> they are angry with Fubar. Men who are under an influence. When it's your wedding time now, you know how to pray that rain will not fall. Ordinary baby's best day. You have become a rainmaker. In the name of Jesus, a command. A command. You can command for weather. But you don't have the ability to command for peace. It's misplaced priority. People gather in church to be running commentary. Football, football commentary. The way this country is going, I don't understand. What... Wait, have you ever seen a coach or a player? Wrong commentary. It's jobless people inside inside studio who cannot affect the play, the tide of the game. They can't score a goal. They can't defend. They can't catch a ball. They are not even on the pitch. They are the commentators. You've seen the coach. So how do they take some jobs? You know, you know things you can do. That's one job I can't do. I can coach you, but I can't be in that pitch when you're playing. Because I will die before all of you. (laughs) 
I noticed that thing. I, you know, it, it, maybe it's a skill they have because I me, mean, I'll be like, excuse me. Do you know? I'm not joking. I can't even watch Nigeria play. You no, know, as people know me, I can't. I can't. I'm not. Talking, I can't watch it. I'm not. I can't watch it. Once I want to play, I go. I run away. Before a person go get high blood pressure. Before you, your blood is so high, your neck will bust. I don't want trouble for my. I told you guys, but you know, I actually run. I'm not joking. I used to get a fever. When the match is going on, come and check my temperature. So one day I reasoned. I said, I know they do it again. I will now see people play, and their coach is on the pitch. And I, you know, I said, what? And you're not dead. How do you <laughs> You know, those guys, they don't even die. And they'll be like, ah, da, 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 giving instruction. Move away, you, you come, come, come. And they can start warming up, yeah, you are replaced. Ah, I'm like, eh? I respect those guys. Me, I'm not going near that place at all. Even if they say I'm the best coach in the world, I'm not coming for the match. <laughs> I'm not coming for the match. Eh? I'm not coming. Come. I'll have assistants who will run the match for me. <laughs> and during that match, I will take video. <laughs> Put them, and it, that is, I'm not, I, the thing gets to me too much. Now, where I'm going, let me just continue my story. The people really make the game, the coach, who's there, directing. He has no time for commentary. If the game is not going the way he expects, he removes one midfielder, replaced with an attacker. I need, to, I need to increase the number of people who are pressing into the other side. If he feels like, ah, oh, we are already three goals up or two goals up, and these guys are pressing us too much. I don't think it's a good strategy, I'm just as an example. He goes, okay, hey, come, remove one midfielder for me. Bring me an extra defender. Form a thick wall there. He's controlling the game. He doesn't have time for commentary. Have you noticed? He won't be there telling you, oh. I mean, the way Osime is playing, I don't think I like it. Osime, this is not the right way to play. He's running, 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 right running. Osime is slowing down. No, 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 he missed the ball. Osime. <laughs> Coach, lie, lie. If Osime plays nonsense, next time they blow whistle, he has raised up something. Oh boy, your name is on it with a red ring around it. Your number. Out. He has put, uh, give me another guy. Uh, okay, he said Musa Yaradua. He has put Musa Yaradua <laughs> to replace you. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know players these days. It doesn't have time for commentary. So when you see the church that's in that, they're not doing anything. I say, church, you're in River State. What is going on the last few days is going on. You should be in church praying. Not apportioning blames. Seeing the hands of Satan. You should be seeing the hand of Satan and saying, God, thus far no further. We ask for your mercy upon this land. If he gives you authority, you believe you have authority, then say in the name of Jesus, we bind, whatever we shall bind on earth, we bind this violence. We command peace. To be losing upon the land. You know, God can make rain fall eh? so hard. Everybody running to their homes. God can, God can blow away all their weapons. You can just wake up one day and hear that all the warring parties have come to a table. And they've got, because you see, for you to sustain anything, you need a force. That force can be removed in intercession. That is what you have as a job, as a Christian. That's what it means to possess a land. Let me tell you something. Anytime God gives you something, you have to go in and do what? Possess it. There's something I wanted to say. Let's read this. A number of scriptures I wanted to read then. If you want a land to bless you, there are two scriptures we are going to read. Let's read first of all Psalm 122. Psalm 122. Now what I want to read... Initially, you wonder what that has got to do with your country. But I'll show you a particular principle there. Psalm 122. I want to read from verse... Now, it's just verse 6, but because we have not really read... I don't read it until we started. So let's just take some verses, all right? 
I'm going to verse 6, but I'll start from verse 1. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem that is built as a city that is compact together, to which the tribes go up, even the tribes of the Lord, an ordinance for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For their thrones were set for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Verse 6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek your good. Now, verse 9 is the explanation that I say I want to give. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. What is the reason? Huh? Answer me. It's not, it's not hidden. It's written there. It's written there. Start from verse 8. Because of my brothers and my friends. And for the sake of the house of the Lord, our God. Why am I praying for Jerusalem? It's not because of the city itself. It's for what it represents. It's for what it accommodates. It's for the persons that the city accommodates. Not only do I pray for Jerusalem. I pray for those who are working to establish peace in that place. Do you get my point? No, look at it. May they pro- that how do I pray for Jerusalem? Uh, Jerusalem. One of the things I make statements I make is may they prosper who love you. Are you getting my point? You will see it. For time's sake, remember you should read this one again quickly. Psalm uh, no, um, Jeremiah chapter twenty nine. What did he say there? He says seek. Let us open to it. Jeremiah chapter twenty nine quickly. Look at what he said. From verse um, yeah, verse, verse seven. So seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on his behalf. What's the reason? In his welfare, you will have welfare. In his peace, you will have peace. In his prosperity, you will have prosperity. That's what God said. Is it because he loved Babylon in itself? No. But because if I've sent you into Babylon, if you want to enjoy Babylon, you must pray for Babylon. If I've sent you into any place, pray for it so you will have peace there. And that's exactly what Paul said. He said, he said to Timothy, first of all, let prayers, entreaties, supplications, intercessions with thanksgivings be made on the behalf of all men For kings and those in authority. What's the purpose? That you may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. Do you get my point? Before God, who desires that every man should be saved. That is for the purpose of God, which is both possibly like this. He said, God gives us richly all things to enjoy. So it's not just for preaching. It's also to enjoy. So every man should be saved. But those who are doing the salvation should also what? Enjoy. So you pray for the peace. Please, you see the rule I'm talking about. When you read this psalm, all right, what we usually think, you know, when war broke out in Gaza, you know, like, 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 that was a year ago. You know that? Time flies, though. In fact, I was telling Junior you know Israel now that I was surprised that today is a week after we did good of the land. Honestly, if you had asked me in the morning, how many days ago was good of the land? I would have told you four days ago. Except that today is Tuesday. And good of the land was on Tuesday. And the last Tuesday was not four days ago. Then I was surprised. Time flies off. So Gaza has been bombed daily now for one year. And it's about to enter Iran. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. <laughs> What I mean is, no, no, I don't mean that literally. No, no. The Lord is good. When the war broke out in Gaza, I went for a meeting. Someone was supposed to lead prayer. 
I'm sorry, some of you may not like this, but it's a fact. See, let's pray. Let's pray for Israel. I said, why? Say, because they are fighting. They said, do, do you know they are fighting in Udi? Then they were fighting in um, uh, Benue. They were back. Ah, I'm like, okay, why am I sending my peace, my prayer to? He said, of course, he hasn't died yet. I was just smiling to myself. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Is this scripture you are quoting? It's not, this scripture does not apply. I'm not saying you don't pray for Israel though, or their peace, but not based on this scripture. Because he said, for the sake of the house of God, don't lie to yourself. Is there any house of God here? Yeah? For the sake of my brethren. He said, what's all of these people are saying? Are there Christians in Gaza? I like the way you answer. I said, they may be. Yes, the answer I felt is a yes. There are Christians everywhere. Are there Christians in Israel? That's today's Israel. Yes. They both need peace. I am praying for one person over another. I follow Jesus Christ. Is it Christ I follow? For the sake of my brethren. For the sake of my brethren. Please banish that funny doctrine out of your mind. That if you pray for a Jew, God will bless you specially. People in Udi, I, I keep on saying Udi because I live close by here. People in Enugu, if you pr- pray for them, you no, know, God will bless you. If you pray for Jibawa people, God will bless you. So I say, what's Jibawa? It's Nigeria. You don't even know the tribes in Nigeria. You know the ones in the Middle East. See, in Taraba State, they have Jibawa people there. They have TV people there. They have Jukuns. They have Hausas. They have Fulanis. And I just want state. Oh, they have. Last year I was in Medugri. One guy was, okay, was doing something for me. Let me not tell you. Was that laughing at me? So he, he, he spoke a language. I said, I, I know Fufu Day. I know Hausa. This is not Fufu Day. This is not Hausa. This, I said, is that Kanuri? He said, it's not Kanuri. He gave me another one. I said, eh? That's in Medugri. He was speaking another language. If you pray for those people, God will bless you. The blessing is tied to Christ. What did I say? Blessing is tied to Christ. What did I say? Say it again. The blessing is tied to Christ. The blessing is tied to Christ. That's what that scripture talks about. Now, I hope you understood that. Like, where is now Jerusalem that you're supposed to pray for? Everywhere your brethren gather. Everywhere we are being built as living stones. Where the house of God being built. Everywhere the church gathers. That the welfare of that society will affect the church. That is where you are. That's your Jerusalem. Some people will say you are preaching replacement theology. Neither, don't also preach displacement theology to me. Don't displace me from the inheritance of God. He said, my brethren. Is that not what he said? Don't displace my brethren. He said, for the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will... Now say, may peace be within you. It's a principle here. It's not a geography. I don't get my point. It's not a matter of geography. It's a principle. I told you, why did God create a nation like ours? So he will say, to the church in Nigeria. So for the sake of the church in Nigeria, I will say to Nigeria, may they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls. And prosperity within your filling stations. That is why you will be surprised when we are praying for somebody who say is not a Christian. Why? Because the man arose and said, Why do we keep on importing refined products? And he and his friends and co they brought money and began to build something that will bless you and bless me. And we all began to pray that that project will succeed. Why? For the sake of my brethren and my friends. For the sake of the house of God. One of the greatest gospel exporting nations on the earth is this one. Can you see the way it works? Some people, they, they say Israel started fighting in Gaza. Hey, hey. I said, hey, it's good to pray. For, I don't like war. But have you prayed for Sudan? I hope you know there are Christians there too. You never heard of Sudan interior mission? That's where it began. I'm not here to criticize anybody. 
But believe me, I spend more energy, or I will spend more energy praying for the troubles, against the troubles in this nation, before I export anyone to the Middle East. If you did not pray for Ukraine, if you did not pray for Russia, then you now woke up and say, want to pray for Israel when they started fighting Gaza. You, I think you're confused. I mean it like that. If you're an international intercessor, you should not have missed praying for the church in both in Ukraine and in Russia. They are still fighting. I hope you know. Sunday, Adelaide had to disappear initially when war began. I don't know where he is right now. I hope you know it will surprise you. Part of that war is a religious war. Yes. Go and see before they started fighting. The church, the Orthodox church in Ukraine and Russia was one body before. They broke just a few years ago. People don't know that. They had just one, maybe archbishop or what do they call them? They had a name for those orthodox rulers. What do you call them? Not prelates. They sound? Eh? My friend, get away. He used one very common one. Is it archbishop? I will not remember. I say it again, get away. It's something like metropolitan. Yeah, something like that. But they have those big names, all right? I will check it afterwards. But the same man controlled both. It was a big deal when they finally broke a few years ago. Now, I'm not here to defend anybody. I'm, I don't think what they are doing is good because they are destroying both countries and it's not good. But you'll be surprised that part of the problem Vladimir Putin had was that the Western influence was getting too strong and Ukraine was bringing it to his borders. Not just about territory, but by religion. Now, I'm not to get, trying to get into their politics. But if you did not pray for them, that's where I'm going. You did not pray for them. And then when they start shooting in Gaza, you, say, you can't pray, but I think you're a bit confused. Because the church was having trouble. You did not raise your voice. And the children of the bond woman, they're having trouble. He said, let us pray. I said, what is up with this guy? You want my prayer? You must love the Lord Jesus Christ. Then when the children are full, then the crumbs will give to you. Don't worry. I know the doctrine is not popular, but I put it on record so that the day you finally wake up, you will know you've heard it before. Why do we pray for the peace of Jerusalem? Why do we declare, may they prosper who love you? No, it is not because you claim that... Uh, Descendants of Jacob live here. And God has a covenant with them. All God's promises are fulfilled only in Christ Jesus. The reason is because for the sake of my brothers and my friends, they need to live in quiet. They have to live in peace. They have to prosper. So anywhere they gather, I must pray. If the church in Nigeria is going to do the work, I must pray for their Jerusalem. The country becomes what? Their Jerusalem in this context. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek your good. Now, I want you to understand something. Say, may they prosper who love you. That is, there are blessings that come upon you. You didn't ask for them. That was what Jesus meant when he said that those, if you pray like this, you have your reward. He said, but enter into your closet and pray this prayer. And your father, who sees from heaven, who sees in secret, will reward you. God rewards those who pray for the peace of the church. And in this context, how does that peace come? You pay, pray for the peace of where they live. Are you getting what I'm going to say here? Anywhere, let me say it to you again. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden because he said that is where I want to come and talk to Adam. Geography. It's not an accident with God. I, read, I like one thing our sister is in the road, you know. <laughs> she said, he said, God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, go to the house of the porter and I will speak to you there. She said, God chooses where he talks to people. You don't. You know, he was with Elijah. He and Elijah were talking. He made Elijah take a trip for 40 days to Horeb so they could have a conversation. I hope you're getting my point. I will say something that will shock some of some people. There's a way you relocate yourself, you stop hearing from heaven. Yeah. Hmm. One man of God told me something once. Senior man of God, not my mate. I mean, senior. 
said so maybe things are not working well for him in Nigeria. You know, they're trying to, so he just feel like anytime I move, things will be better. So his friends persuaded him to come over to their, another country, not Nigeria. They arranged, of course, if it's another country, I think, you get my point. So he moved to another country. So the day he arrived, the man laid down after a long flight. He just kind of fell asleep and immediately had a dream. And he saw one other man of God in Nigeria. He mentioned the name. And the man rode towards him on a very big motorbike. Got to him and stopped. And said, what are you doing here? That you have a lot of work to do back home. And the man rode away. And this man woke up and packed his bag. <laughs> Took the next flight. His friends were surprised. He told them, no, I'm going. But you just came yesterday. No, 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 I'm going today. Yeah, the next flight was on the plane. He said, how else do I want God to talk? See, I told us last, time, last Saturday, don't use your comfort and material prosperity as a sign of whether you are where you are supposed to be or not. Please let me begin to round off with this. Take your geographical location seriously because God has appointed a place intends to meet you. <laughs> so if you don't read your Bible, well, you'll be wondering, why does God behave like this? You saw Elijah. Elijah said, I'm the only one remaining and they are seeking my life. God said, oh yeah, move. I want to talk to you. And he had to walk for 40 days. Why didn't God talk to him there? Why didn't he just talk to him where he was? He made him travel for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb. And when he got there, God said, what are you doing here? He repeated the same thing he said before. And you're like, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Didn't you hear me before? Then God gave him three clear instructions. Go and anoint Elijah. Anoint Hazael. And anoint, who's the third person now? Je- was it Jehu? I just feel like reading it. I mean, like, even though I've quoted it. First in chapter 19. If you read from the beginning... After Jezebel heard everything that had happened, after the prophets had been killed, the false prophets, he threatened the life of Elijah, and Elijah ran. Verse 4 says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He went there to pray, and came and sat under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take my life, for I am not better than my father's. He laid down and slept under a juniper tree, and behold, there was an angel touching him. And that one told him, Arise, eat. Then verse 7, he ate again. Then he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. Now where I'm going is this. Then he came to a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, what are you doing here? Elijah, I'm not going to say, say much more than this. That read much more. But God now gave him the instruction. Now, okay, now, yeah, I'm getting it now. I'm, but I was trying to get something right. Yes, let me just rearrange it in, the, in proper order. Elijah said, I've been zealous for the Lord, for the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword, and I alone am left. And God now said in verse 11, go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? First, he ran for 40 days. God could have, an angel came and gave him food. God could have talked to him there. He was praying. God didn't answer him there. He went for 40 days to Horeb. He got there. God spoke to him. Now go up the mountain to go and stand. Let me tell you something there. Don't joke with your geography. What did I say? You say it like you heard me. It's not everywhere that God talks from to you. Some people have left where they can hear the voice of God. They just assume that God will come to where they are. No. He went to look for Adam in the garden. You know what he said? Where are you? Are you saying he didn't know where Adam was? He knew. But he said, no, this is our place of appointment. Once I was traveling abroad, a friend of mine said, ah, are you going to come back? I was only in the U.S. I said, how about how can you ask that kind of question? I have a ministry I'm running in Enugu. Ah, he said, there's a ministry in America. You want to hear? No, it does not exist. For Bank Olishino, commonly called Pastor Banky. 
it doesn't exist. I've seen people, God gave platform. Now, I want to digress, but I'll get to it. Platform. Preaching the word of God. People listen to them every day. Then Satan gives them a visa and they take it. And you see them struggling every day for relevance. Every day. There's one guy I saw. He left the church. He had, I mean, he didn't have members, maybe 100 and something people. Now, we we'll see him trying to invite people to come and join him. Then one day I decided to join. I found, you know how many people I found? That, how many of us joined? Two of us worldwide. Two is a number, I mean, come on. <laughs> he just, I'm wondering that, what is this life about? Is it, life is about good road. God gave you a voice. Man listens to you. They honored you. But no, it's not enough. You think ministry is just anywhere? No, brethren. Ministry is not everywhere. Even business is not everywhere. Music is not everywhere. Most of these Nigerian musicians that are making noise, like not most, a lot of them came from London. They could do nothing. They sing, they dance, they do everything. Who knew about them? I was telling my wife that, who was I telling? One Nigerian guy. Okay, it was my children. The guy sang once. The nation felt it. Because we are streaming, no, I don't want to give details and give names, all right? But he sang one song, released one album. The whole nation felt it. Even after he had gone down, I was a young doctor working for 5000 naira a month salary. He was playing music, 200000 naira a night at private birthday parties. This whole nation was trembling before him. They won the parking lot. Saying they go to New York. See, you have to know the Igbo that your head can handle. <laughs> you are in Nigeria. They import Igbo from Mundo State for you to Enugu. You smoke it. Your head is not too broken. You now go to New York. They give you crack. There's a reason why they call that thing crack. It cracks people's heads. Some of those boys are brought, they use their weed eh, and listen with PCP. And speed and wrap it back. When you drag it, eh, you start running like motor car. <laughs> the guy reached New York. When they were done with him, his head was not correct again. They returned him back to Nigeria after some years. His wife left him. She didn't have a choice, really. He was broken, he was in pieces. At a point in time, he was begging on the street. Few years later, he died. And I said, Who told you to leave? See, that's why it's not good to smoke weed. It will give you ideas. Please, brethren, don't smoke weed. Though. I know what I'm telling you. See, they asked Akim Bilo Sagi. Was it Akim? Yeah, Akim Bilo Sagi. They asked him, he was giving a lecture in America. These are the big businessmen of Nigeria. He said, they said, what about the instability in the country? He said, there's instability in the, everywhere. He said, in America, there's technological instability. He said, you can invest millions of dollars today. They release maybe one new app, one new chip, something. Your business is dead. So you have to learn to manage your own instability. What I'm going to say, he knows how to manage Nigeria's instability. They asked Dangote once, that Nigeria is a difficult place to do business. He said, but the profit is huge. Wait a minute, I told him. The man said, no, then the profit is great. He said, a difficult place. He said, I know. But, oh boy, if you can handle it, the profit is nice. That's why he stayed within the country and became the richest black man on the earth. Till now he is. Now, where am I going with all of this? Things? Be careful about your geography. Be careful. It's not everywhere you go. I just use this natural thing to so just illustrate. It's not everywhere you go. And then you're, look, God will go to where he kept you. I say, where are you? Anything you will hear, before you can hear him clearly, you come back there. That is why anytime he gives you a land, you know what to do? Guard it and keep it. For the sake of the brethren. Let me summarize, please. Maybe I will develop this again. I don't know. I may not get back there. This country, I'm giving you the prophetic word of God. God gave it. To his people. And you and I have a responsibility to take charge 
I've told you before, when they want to do an election as a president, tell them, say, see, this is a no-go. Let's start with Nigeria. Asorok, whoever you are, I, okay, I need to say this. I was saying the last time, I don't know whether I developed it further. You have a job to contribute faith. All this my teaching today is to stir faith in your hearts. The people who are listening to me, I don't know how many people are. A lot of people are listening online. If we were just the amount of faith released now by the Holy Spirit into the air, if you just cut that face out, you'll be amazed at what God will use to do. You've not even prayed. Though. You now turn. And listen, when you hear news, you will go out and pray. Not commentary. You know what I have learned in recent times more than any other thing? Except the Lord builds the house. The labor in vain that builds. I've learned that thing. If the spirit of banditry is not removed by God, 10 million Nigerian soldiers can't end it. If God does not say, give them a stable currency, Cardoso, that's our current CBN boss, frustration will kill him, trying to stabilize the currency. It's only when God says, leave, that the currency will stabilize. You want a stable currency? Ask him for it. If you have, you know, some people say parading that if you have good leaders, I'm sorry, you are ignorant. You are ignorant. You are ignorant. There is nothing a good leader can do if the blessing of God doesn't go ahead of him. You're too ignorant. You spend your money on campaign, Christian. You should spend your money on retreats. Go to a corner and say, brethren, we have a weekend. We are going to be fasting and praying from morning. Evening, we have communion together and then we will feast. Three days, we are praying for the country. You will hear the word taught at least two hours. You will read scriptures there. Eh? And please, don't go there and be praying nonsense prayer. Because this one, people will tell you, let's pray for Nigeria. Please. That laziness, I don't want it. They will not even think. The other day, my children saw me dancing in the house. They didn't know. I said, what is that one? I was joining prayer. <laughs> Let's pray for Nigeria. That, oh, begin to pray for Nigeria. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hey, yeah. oh, no. hey, the same tongue you spoke last week. Can't you say you're not okay? Turn that into a bad habit in this generation. I see them praying all over the place. I sat and said, I told my wife yesterday, I said, thank God, I made I grew up in this Pentecostal thing. Thank God we spoke in tongues. We've grown in the spirit. There's none I don't do regularly. But that's not how it is done. Let's pray for Nigeria. What are you doing with the microphone? Are you okay? <laughs> Go there, have scriptures, have prophetic words that you release for three days. You see, there's nothing, you can ask God to do some things. Father God, rice is expensive. Your children need to eat. Send rice. Lord, we broadcast. We spend a lot of money in international broadcast. We pay in US dollars. Choose one. Lower the rate or send dollar. Do you get my point? Pray like your head is working. Sometimes we pray prayers that even God answers it. Eh? We won't even know whether he has answered it or not. Let's pray for Nigeria. After you shout at that for one hour. God, now, you don't even know whether it is your prayer that's causing problems in Portacourt or not. You don't even know. People of God, that's where the power of, of the Christian lies. Let's, I just saw my time now. I didn't realize we were spoken for this long. Let's that Let me stop it here. Let's that Just say, Father, thank you. I will be responsible. That's just a simple thing. Lord, I will be responsible. Lord, I will be responsible. For the sake of of my friends, for the sake of my brethren, I ask you, grant peace upon this land. For the sake of my brethren, Lord, I ask, for the sake of the house of God, the house that you are building with living stones, which my brother on my left, my sister on my right, my brethren around me are part of that house. For the sake of the house of God, I seek the good of this land. And I declare upon this nation, peace reign. Peace reign. Peace reign. Prosperity reign. Peace reign. We live a, a, a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. 
Before God who wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, we speak to the seat of government. Do the will of God. We compel you in the name of Jesus. We release the word of the Lord to you. Like the water brooks, the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. You will make the decisions that will make the oppressed go free. Thank you, Father God. Give the give Lord thanks. Oh, I didn't know we've taken so much time. Give the Lord thanks. Say, Father, we thank you. So, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Father, we thank you so much for charging our heart, faith this evening. We are redeemers for this land. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let's share the grace and fellowship. Because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, surely we have passed out of death and we have passed into life. We have passed out of darkness into the light of Christ. We have passed out from under the curse into the blessing. All things have passed away in our lives. We are now filled with the spirit of Christ. We live above sin and walk above the devil because we are seated high above with Christ. This is our season of the demonstration of the spirit and of the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Bless somebody beside you. Say, this is your season. How about yourself? This is my season of the demonstration of the Spirit and of the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All right, cheer up, brethren. God bless you.